Good morning and welcome to another edition of DFS Today. This is your Sunday, January 9th edition. I am your host, Santino Cacone. I want to apologize beforehand. Uh, by the time this comes out, it's going to be very close or past uh, the 12 o'clock tip-off time for the first game. Um, so we're just going to do this main eight-game slate starting at 6 p.m. Uh, <clears throat> cut that out of there just so we can focus on that slate since the other one we're probably not going to have much time when this is published. Uh, and I apologize for that. With all that said, you want to know what? Let's get right into it. We have on the docket for the eight-game main slate, first game, Washington Wizards taking on the Orlando Magic in Orlando. This tips off at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, On the injury report, we have nothing for the Magic as of yet. They are on the back end of a back-to-back. We can let you know who missed the last game. Um, We had Jalen Suggs still out. We had Wendell Carter Jr. missing the last game, so that's something to keep an eye on. Foltz, Carter Williams, Isaac, uh, we know all those guys are out. Robin Lopez is questionable. Um, Etwan Moore is out as well. But we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on Wendell Carter Jr. That's the big news there. Uh, If he misses again, we will see some moving and shaking. Okiki, Ross, other people will get some more minutes, but we'll touch on that in a few. Uh, For the Wizards, we have Davis Bertans is questionable. Rui Hachimura is questionable to make his season debut. Trez, Draymond Waters, also questionable. Cassius Winston, out. Anthony Gill, out. And Thomas Bryant, out. Uh, We do have a spread for this one, too. Uh, Right now, we have a 220 game total. And the Wizards are seven-point road favorites. All right, let's go start with the Wizards here. Uh, Very favorable matchup. Going against Orlando, we have quite a few people questionable as of right now. Uh, Bertans, Harrell, Rui making a season debut. That's a lot of front court guys. A lot of front court guys. Um, so that'll change up the dynamic of most of these. If, if they all play, even if it's somewhat not a ton of minutes, Kuzma, Gafford, Advia, a lot of these guys are going to get um, their minutes decline or decreased a little bit here as everybody catches up to speed. Rui was the starter power starting power forward uh, since he was drafted here. So that is interesting to see. I don't think he's going to start with Kuzma there now, but we'll see. Maybe they put a lot of uh, both those guys in the lineup at the same time playing both forward spots. That said, probably not going to have too, too much interest in a lot of these guys. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie at six, three is the one that I'm focusing on the most at the moment. Uh, if Trez does play and say Rui doesn't or whatnot, um, 4500 I really like that price tag. Very, very solid price tag. Um, if he doesn't, Gafford gets a bump, but I'd rather just pay Dinwiddie similar price tag there. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm mainly looking at Dinwiddie. KCP, not crazy high. Uh, I would prefer Advia, $600 cheaper, uh, especially if this guy's missed, then I'll, I'll continue to go Advia. If they all, if Harrell, Rui, uh, Bertans, a couple of the two of those three play, then I'll, I'll just uh, <clears throat> let Advia go away and just look at Harrell and Dinwiddie. But that's mainly where I'm looking at on this side of the ball. On the other side of the ball, we'll keep an eye out. We know Cole Anthony hurt his ankles. Hurt one, then hurt the other. Uh, he did play last night, but this is the back end of a back-to-back. Maybe that changes things. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that. If he doesn't play, we know Tim Frazier, Gravit will <clears throat> see see more opportunities there. Um, RJ Hampton as well. Ross gets a bump. Gary Harris gets a bump. Uh, but if he does play, um, we'll see what happens. Carter Jr. missed last game. We'll see if he plays. If he doesn't, again, more people. Okiki, Franz Wagner, more minutes for these guys. Terrence Ross, everybody jumps down in the rotation. Um, <clears throat> we'll keep it as same people are out as the as last night. As uh, um, and That's what I'll hope. We'll play it. Mo Bamba at 5800 Very, very good price tag. Uh, since he's come back, kind of got eased into the rotation the first two games, 18 minutes, <clears throat> then t- 22 minutes. Last two, he's played 28 and 29. Uh, shot the ball very poorly last game, two of seven from the field. But he still had four blocks, seven rebounds, a couple assists, uh, and, and very low points for 25 fantasy points. 
little undervalued there, but he shot two of seven. I don't expect that to happen again. I expect him to play a little bit better um, in this matchup. The game before that, he was eight of twelve, put up thirty-eight and a half fantasy points under six K. Bamba makes a ton of sense. Just a very, very solid price tag. Uh, Wagner does get a bump without Wendell Carter Jr. as well, um, <clears throat> but we'll see if that continues. I'd rather just go to Bamba for the upside at five eight. Um, if there's no Carter Jr. or anybody else miss, uh, Gary Harris, I prefer at 4,800. He's still very, very cheap. Uh, um, even with everybody coming back, he's just been crushing value outside of the game against Philly a couple games ago where he had 13 and a half fantasy points. You just look, he's been hitting 20s, 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 30s, 30s, uh, 35. Last game, 41 fantasy points. I don't expect him to go eight of 17 and drop 28 actual points again, but He's just hitting value, so he is a guy that you can definitely play. Uh, Okiki becomes interesting if Carter Jr. misses again. Uh, He did play a chunk of minutes, 26 minutes last night. He shot just one of eight from the field, though. That was poor. He did grab 10 rebounds and still managed to put up 20 fantasy points, but um, any better from the field, or or he didn't even get uh, one stock, so any better from the field uh, and contributing defensively like we know he can, that's some good value there. Uh, he hit that doing none of those, neither of those two things. So I, I think uh, he can hit value again and exceed it if Carter Jr. is missing. If Carter Jr. does play, uh, I will just leave those guys alone and look at Bomba, Gary Harris, a little less so um, there and pretty much leave everybody else alone on this one. Then we'll jump on over to the next game of the docket. We have the New Orleans Pelicans taking on the Toronto Raptors. This is also at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we have a spread for you guys, and it is 222. The Raptors are six and a half point home favorites. On the injury report, we have for the Pelicans, Josh Hart is not with the team in this one. He didn't travel. Um, Kyra Lewis, Didi Lazauda, Tomas Sadoransky, Zion Williamson all out for the Raptors. Drajic and Wantanabe are out for this one. We will start with the Pelicans with Josh Hart out. That is leaves a gaping hole uh, on this Pelican side of the ball. Uh, Josh Hart, we know, is a fantastic rebounder for a guard, uh, and he's been facilitating the ball a lot, being a playmaker that we haven't seen uh, throughout his career up to this point. So that's a lot of usage. That's a lot of um, playmaking to go around, a lot of extra rebounds to go around. Uh, Herb Jones, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Two guys that should fill this void. Um, Alexander Walker kind of out of the rotation lately. Uh, The last two games he's played minutes in the teens, but that's going to have to jump up without Josh Hart here. He might draw the start again, uh, 3,700. If he does, I'll take a chance on him because we know the upside is there. He just hasn't really been close uh, this year. Herb Jones is more 5K now. Guy's been playing really well. The minutes are there. Um, The defense is there. The rebounds, he pitches in a little bit out everywhere. Uh, I don't mind taking that 5K stab, knowing that he might have to have some more playmaking ability here. Uh, and it's, it, it is an, a solid matchup here, so I, I don't mind that. Brandon Ingram at 8-5. Um, not too expensive. I think they're upside here, uh, and he's going to have to do a lot more heavy lifting without Josh Hart. Uh, we know that he can fill up the, the stat sheet when needed. Last three games, he's averaging six assists, so that is very solid right there, and I think... Um, even more room without Josh Hart here, extra rebounds available. Uh, those are the three guys that I'm, I'm looking at the most. If you want to do the revenge game for J Val against his former team, can, but, um, I'll probably leave that alone for the most part, but I'll, I don't mind taking chances on that because, uh, he can rip down rebounds and we have seen. What a catch by George Kittle. <laughs> hey, Niner fans, George Kittle here with a pro tip for making the best play on your eyewear. Visit Zinni.com, the official eyewear of the 49ers. Zinni has changed the game for you, finally making prescription glasses affordable for everyone. At Zinni, you can find over 3,000 frames with unbelievable prices. Look for the Kittles collection so you can rock our styles every day, too. So visit Z-E-N-N-I.com, start shopping from home using their virtual try-on, and change your eyewear game forever. Centers have some success against this Toronto team uh, since they play smaller. But I I would prefer... Trying to go after Ingram there. All right, and that's likely it. Uh, Ingram, Jones, Walker, those are my three favorite. Uh, we know Garrett, Garrett Temple is going to play a lot because he, he does, uh, but I'd rather prefer going at, at Walker, taking the chance there. On the other side of the ball, we're going to uh, 
the Raptor side, we have two guys that have been heating up and lighting it up. Fred Van Vliet and Siaka right at the top of the totem pole uh, for these guys. Fred Van Vliet just put up a triple-double in this last one. And now he jumped all the way up to over 10K. Uh, hasn't been there in forever. I don't know if he has at all this season. I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> but that is a hefty price tag. But he's well-earned it. And this is a fantastic matchup. I don't mind taking a look at him here. Um, Scotty Barnes. I haven't said his name too, too much lately. Uh, 7-4. I think this is a solid matchup. I do prefer going after OG instead um, at only 6-7. He's been starting to heat it up. He's been shooting very solid from the field in the last two games, over 60%. Uh, four of seven from three identically the last two games. And we know he can uh, always pitch in elsewhere too, so I don't. I, I kind of like going after OG there. Gary Trent Jr., 5,500. Just a solid price tag. Uh, some, some of these games that Van Vliet and Siakam, OG aren't going to heat up every game. Uh, and it's always nice to to get that flyer on a Gary Trent Jr. as one of the fourth options on this team. Uh, but he has two out of the last three games. He had over 30 fantasy points. Uh, and that's nice value there. So don't make taking a chance on him, especially in a matchup like this against the Pelicans side of the ball. And that's likely it where I'm looking at on this side. We will jump on over to the next game. We have Minnesota Timberwolves taking on the Houston Rockets uh, on the Spread, we have a 227.5, which is the highest of the night game total. And the Wolves are 5.5-point road favorites. On the injury report, uh, we have Garuba, Sengen, out. Garrison Matthews, questionable. Um, Balmero, out. Patrick Beverly, questionable. We'll start with the Wolves. Uh, Patrick Beverly being questionable does help everybody out a little bit. A uh, lot more room to operate for D'Angelo Russell at 7-8. He's the cheapest of the big three. Uh, and he has two two out of the last three games, he has over 50 fantasy points. Kind of laid a dud against OKC, uh, that first matchup, but then came back strong. Shot 11 of 12 from the field and had a 52 fantasy points in that one. Uh, he gets a big bump if Beverly isn't there. He plays more on ball. He plays a lot more uh, point guard, facilitates everything. Sometimes... And they'll switch on and off with Beverly handling. Um, but three out of the last four games, this dude has double-digit assists, um, and he's scoring the ball very, very efficiently outside that one game. So, uh, <clears throat> or Well, I shouldn't say efficiently. He's scoring the ball very solidly uh, with the amount of volume that he gets. So I really like D'Angelo Russell in this one at 7-8. He would be my preferred out of the two or out of the big three. Um, Edwards had a big game against Houston the first time, but I, I'm going to lean towards Russell. With the slight discount here, um, Towns under 10K is always somebody that is intriguing, and he had a big game against this team. The first one had 30 points, 10 rebounds, uh, four stocks, and a couple assists. Uh, he will be in my player pool. I don't know how much exposure I will have to him, but I know he can easily put up 50 points in this matchup uh, if it stays competitive. And So I like him here. Um, <clears throat> Vanderbilt is always an option. and I'm saying a lot of people on this. I think this is a very solid uh, team. Vanderbilt is always an option, and this guy rips down rebo- uh, rebounds. Uh, his value hinges on what he does on the offensive end and how many shots he gets up. Uh, if he can get nine shots again like last game, we know his field goal percentage is through the roof, um, and we know the rebounds are going to be there, and, and, and the stocks are going to be there. So uh, that's a matter of that scenario, but I, I think he can easily beat this value again. Um, 25 points, he's been doing that regularly. Uh, in the 20s or higher, so I, I like taking chances on him, especially in cash games because he's very, very safe. Uh, Beverly's missing would open up opportunity for Beasley and Noel, but they're a little priced high, a little too high to where I don't want to uh, go attack them. I'm mainly looking at the three guys that I mentioned. On the other side of the ball, Christian Wood, only 7-3 is still a solid price tag. Uh, this is a matchup that he can take advantage of, and now uh, in the first meeting against these guys, he had 16-9-3 and with the block. I would want to hope for better. He only shot 6 of 15 from the field. So I'd hope for better. Uh, We know he's fantastic from the field. Um, I don't think 7-3 is too crazy of a price tag to look at. I know the last game he only had 29 fantasy points, but he can easily get to 40 in this one. Uh, So I don't mind taking a chance on him, but I won't have a ton of exposure there. Um, Outside of that, Garrison Matthews missing. Does open up shots and and time for uh, K.J. Martin, Eric Gordon, Jalen Green. 
I do like Eric Gordon and I do like Jalen Green. I think their price tags are solid. Uh, only 5K and 4.7, especially without Matthews. It's more shots to go around, uh, more spot up shots for Eric Gordon. Uh, so I, I'll take chances on those two there. All right, jumping on over to the next game at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the Denver Nuggets taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, we have a 216 game total, which is the lowest of the night. And the Nuggets are seven point road favorites. On the injury report, we have Kankar, Dozier, Howard, Murray, Porter Jr., Isaiah Roby, all out. Derek Favors as questionable. All right, jumping on to the Denver side of the ball. We have the highest paid, um, highest paid, most expensive pl- um, option on the slate, Nikola Jokic. And for good reason, we say this every time, he's just super safe cash. Uh, I don't I don't care. I could pay for him in cash. Uh, tournaments as well. Last two games, uh, he has over 66 fantasy points each. He had a 75-pointer uh, against Utah. Just super safe. There's not really much in the way of uh, opposition again in OKC's front court that I'm nervous about in the least bit for Jokic. Uh, we know he's the engine of the Nuggets. So 12-2, don't mind paying for him in each uh, but I p- would prefer him in cash. It's just super, super safe. You, you know what you're going to get. The floor is concrete. Uh, you're not breaking through it. It's just, it's solid. It's, it, it's not, nothing's happening with that floor. Um, outside of him, though, everybody else is priced accordingly, to be honest. Everyone's under 6K. Um, Will Barton at 5'7 is, is not too bad of an option. Uh, I think there's some upside there, some meat left on the bone, but probably not going to go there. I'm going to go more towards uh, Monte Morris at 4'7". That's just still a solid price tag. Uh, he got his starting rollback again. Um, he's putting up points in the mid-20s, but there's still room for improvement, and he's under 5K. I really like that price tag. Uh, we know we can get up a 30-burger here or a 35-pointer. Uh, there, so I don't mind taking chances on him. Not so much in cash, but tournament type options here. Uh, Jeff Green and Jim Michael Green. If you don't think this game is going to be close, you could take flyers on them under the 4K mark. Uh, we know that they have some upside to beat that, but probably not going to have too much exposure, uh, depending on the yeah the rest of my lineup. If I'm under 4K and I need to throw someone in there, that's when I'll look at them at the end of my lineup. On the other side of the ball, something similar. We have Shy at 8-2, Giddy's up there now at 7K, uh, and then everybody else is pretty low. Um, Lou Dort, probably the one guy that I'm looking at, or one of the main guys that I'm looking at on this side of the ball. Uh, 5-4, he does get some solid shot attempts. Uh, he's very, very streaky, um, so he's just a tournament option to separate yourself from the pack and maybe get a vintage Lou Dort game uh, when he just goes crazy from the field. Outside of that, this is this rotation is up and down. Um, some people are getting minutes here, some are getting there, and we don't know who's going to play what on any given day. And even if this game is close, uh, most of these guys are young anyway. So, or it isn't close, I should say. Most of these guys are young anyway. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'll take some shots at Dort, but outside of that, uh, not really touching much of this team. Before we move on, I want everybody to let to let everybody know that we have a brand new daily fantasy partner at Sport Ethos, Thrive Fantasy. Prop up with Thrive Fantasy on their mobile app or at thrivefantasy.com. Use code ETHOS when you sign up to get a 100% deposit match bonus on your first deposit up to 100 bucks, plus either two or four free game tickets to play. Pick player props on the biggest names playing every night, score points when your props hit, and the players with the most pro- uh, points win a share of the nightly prize money. It is awesome. Do check it out. Uh, if you like props, you like DFS, you'll love this. I also want everybody to know that um, remind you to use the coupon code HoopBall20 at Manscaped.com for 20% off your order and free shipping. And also to check out our pals at MyBookie.ag. Use code HoopBall on the third page of sign up to unlock deposit match bonuses there as well. Uh, also, don't you guys should stop giving your personal information to your ISP. On top of overcharging, your ISP is allowed to legally sell your browsing history to third-party advertisers for a ton of cash. Take your privacy back with ExpressVPN. Head to our special promotion link uh, at expressvpn.com slash hoopball 
to get three months of bonus feature on a 12-month subscription. It's super easy. Turning it on just takes one click, and it works great with streaming services like Netflix or sports packages like League Pass 2. Uh, one more, that's expressvpn.com slash hoopball. Grab those three extra bonus months now. It is fantastic. Uh, all right, guys, let's jump on. We have a couple games left here. Uh, halfway through the slate, we have four games left. First game at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the Chicago Bulls taking on the Dallas Mavericks. We have a 218.5 game total. The Bulls are 3.5 point road favorites. On the injury report, we have Porzingis, McLaughlin, Cauley Stein, Patrick Williams, Javante Green, Tyler Cook, Caruso, Jordan Bell, all out, and Luka as questionable. Obviously, that's the big news, uh, but we'll start with Chicago. Everybody missing here. Um, <clears throat> Vooch is in a, in a fantastic spot for me. Uh, love the matchup with or without Porzingis. Porzingis is one of the better rim protectors in the league. And now they have Kleba, Dwight Powell, people that Vooch can take advantage of. Uh, 9100 I think that's a very solid price tag. Uh, he's still not moving up too crazily. I would have I'd prefer him over Zach Levine. Um, I, I think he should be priced above Zach Levine at this point. I prefer him over DeRozan in this matchup. Though I don't mind DeRozan either. I prefer DeRozan over Levine. Um, but I really like Vooch in, in this matchup. Lonzo Ball is a guy I'm contemplating, but looking at Kobe White at 5,500, um, <clears throat> prefer him there. I, the upside isn't as evident, but without Alex Caruso playing yet uh, for a little while, he has been seeing minutes in the 30s. Uh, the last five straight games, at least 32 minutes, he's been crushing value. He has two games in in the 40-point range, uh, one in 30, and then two 25 and above. He's just hitting value here, so uh, we could continue to take that here. Uh, in a matchup that is pretty friendly. Um, so I like I like Kobe White here. If I want to take a chance on someone cheap, it would be A.O. Um, he is very streaky, just like Jones, just like uh, some other guys here. Uh, Green when he's healthy, uh, Troy Brown Jr. when he's more in the rotation. Uh, but we know that he can play basketball, and he's pretty good. To, and this matchup isn't crazy. Uh, under 4K, I'll take a chance on him, but not too much. He, he's one of the... Just like I mentioned, the greens, uh, at the end of my lineup, if I find that I need four, under 4K, he will be in that that player pool. Outside of that, I'm not going out of my way to put him in. Um, but I do like Kobe White. I do like Fooch a lot in this matchup. Jumping on over to Dallas, <clears throat> obviously, we don't have Porzingis, but a lot will hinge on Luka's availability. Uh, if Luka does miss this game, bumps to Brunson, bumps to Hardaway, bumps to pretty much everybody. Um, I will take another chance on Hardaway. I have 5,700. Still, still solidly cheap. He helped me in the last one at 37 fantasy points. Uh, I think he can do it again. Uh, him and Brunson will be carrying the load here uh, without Luca. So that's where I would look more. But he has a big discount on him, uh, an under 6K. So I don't mind looking at Hardaway Jr. to try and keep this game close. Uh, Maxi Kleba is always a popular pick at 4,400. You can still look at him again. I don't think the upside is huge, but... Four to uh, five out of his. Ugh. Let's try that again. Five out of his last six games, he has over 21 fantasy points. Uh, and that one that he didn't, 19 and a half. So he's right there, at hit close to value. Nothing over 30, uh, close to value, but nothing too crazy. Uh, that's probably where I'll look at the most there. Let's jump on over to the next game. We have the Cleveland Cavaliers taking on the Golden State Warriors. We have a 218 game total, and the Warriors are. 10-point home favorites. On the injury report, we have just Wiseman, Fall, Okoro, Rubio, Sexton. Out, Juan Toscano, Anderson as questionable. I'm going to bury the lead on this one, but I'm going to go with Cleveland because they are the away team. You'll understand what I'm saying in a second if you already don't. But on Cleveland, um, the Warriors are one of the best defensive teams in the league. We know that. And this is a tough matchup. Um, Rondo would be a guy I'd, I'd look at at 3,300 just to see if he's playing 20 minutes again. Um, and if he's playing 20, 25 minutes, he can bring back value at such a cheap price tag with a Coro still out and minutes available in the backcourt. Um, <clears throat> outside of that, 
not too in love with everybody. The Warriors are going to be hyped up. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a different game, but um, I don't. J- Jared Allen, Kevin Love, the front court. I think we can look at, but they're just slightly higher priced to where I'm probably not going to get enough exposure to them or as much exposure to them. I'm probably for the most part I'll leave everybody alone. I would take a look at Chetty Osmond along with Ruby uh, Rondo as well, uh, because he's going to likely start and get a lot of minutes opportunity without a Coro and and a lot of these other guys in the backcourt. Um, but I, I really don't like it on the other side of the ball. And we will have the season debut after forever. It feels like years upon years upon years. Clay Thompson will officially be back. He hasn't played since June of 2019 when he tore his ACL. I was going to come back last year, tore his Achilles before the season. Uh, Just brutal, brutal, brutal. But now we have him back. Um, I'm not going to play him at 5'8". I don't think he's going to play enough minutes to hit that. But it is Clay Thompson, one of the best pure shooters I've ever seen uh, that's ever played this game. And he's one of the best two-way players in the game. Uh, I've always said he's the perfect teammate. He can do everything, and his role is really... Uh, you can stick him anywhere on a team, and he, he would make it better. So love that Clay Thompson is back. Uh, was the best shooting guard when he was healthy. Yes, two-way. Um, glad to have him back. Just not going to have too much exposure to him. Uh, with that said, I probably won't have too much exposure to a lot of this Warrior team. I, his, him coming back, even in limited minutes, probably under 20, does affect people. Poole, Porter Jr., Peyton, uh, Lee, everybody, the whole rotation, Wiggins. Where do the shots go? How do the rotations look? Uh, Got to see that happening first. Uh, and Cleveland's a really good defensive team on top of that, so it's not going to be a fun game. This is one of the lowest totals of the night. Uh, but I know everybody's going to be amped up, so that is something extra. But uh, everybody's priced where I want to see this play out for a couple games before I, I really attack Golden State Warriors. Um with Curry on a shooting slump, you can look for him to bounce back. But at 11K against this matchup, I'll probably leave it with Clay Thompson coming back. They're probably going to want to get him involved. Um, so I'm going to leave pretty much this game alone and and give it a couple games to to evaluate. All right, jumping on over to the next team game, we have uh, Sacramento Kings taking on the Portland Trail Blazers. On the injury report, we have Lillard, McCollum, Nance, Holmes, Midu, all out. Arkless, Fox, questionable. On the spread, we have a 224 game total, and the Kings are one and a half point road favorites. Uh, this is the second to last game of the night, and it's a pretty good one. Um, I mentioned Fox is questionable. That is the big news of this one. Uh, does he play? Does he not? If he doesn't play, uh, we will load up on Halliburton under 7K. That is just too easy. He's my favorite. Uh, I can just say he's my favorite mid-tier play of the night, especially if uh, if Fox doesn't play. Just load up on him. You can, in this matchup, especially 50 points, uh, we can expect 40, I think, is the bare minimum that we can expect without Fox. So Halliburton is going to be highly owned. Um, if we don't have the news before 6 p.m., Maybe not so much cash, but I will have a ton of shares on them in tournament, try and separate myself from that pack, uh, and hope that other people uh, don't get them in if, if Fox doesn't play. So um, keep an eye on that. And if Fox does play, I still think Halliburton is, is a solid value value under eight, uh, 7K with this matchup. Um, he's still going to play a ton. Obviously, the upside isn't as evident, but it's still pretty nice. Uh, and Fox does become in play for me as well under 8K. He's been hitting over 40 points last couple games. I think it can continue in this matchup. Uh, Outside of that, kind of looking at everything, Holmes is out. We know Len, Jones, Thompson now. Uh, They're all pretty much mashing up that front court. We saw Jones take advantage of it for a couple games. Now Len is taking advantage of it. Uh, Tristan Thompson is always a looming threat, even though he hasn't played much in the last four games or so. Uh, But he's always a looming threat to, to take more a time there. Um, and he hasn't even played a couple of those games, actually. Um, Marvin Bagley under 5K. I keep coming back to him. Uh, I think they're still showcasing him to trade. Um, he hasn't really scored and rebounded in the same game yet, but it's going to come. It's going to come. He's doing rebounding. Uh, he had two games straight, back-to-back games with 12 rebounds. 
Uh, and then the next game, he only had five, but he scored 12 points. Eventually, it's going to be a double-double there, and under 5K, I'll take a chance on him. We know he could pitch in and a steal and a block occasionally and get a, an assist or three. Um, so I think he, as long as he's playing 29-plus minutes and Rashawn Holmes is out in this matchup, I still like him under 5K, so I'll take some chances on him in, in tournament. Uh, and that's it. If Fox doesn't play, Davion Mitchell, Buddy Heald become uh, guys that I'm looking at a little bit more too. 5-5 five, five for Buddy Heald, only 3-4 for Davion Mitchell. Very, very good price tags for them. Uh, and you can look at Terrence Davis as well. He might start now that he's back. Um, and only bare minimum 3K. But that's if Fox doesn't play. Those three guys will come and play for me uh, as well. All right, we're going on over to the Portland side of the ball. Um, <clears throat> we know Lillard, McCollum, now Nance, all out. Robert Covington, only 5-1. He's the guy that I'm looking at. Price tag jumped up. He was under um, low 4Ks for a little while, but now that he's back in the starting lineup, he played 34 minutes against Cleveland, had a really good game. Uh, 5-1, I still think there's some meat left on the bone for him without Nance there. Uh, they need They need... Someone to step up in that front court outside of uh, Nurkic, but Powell and Simons really like the matchup. You can you can score against Sacramento. It's going to be a high paced game. Um, it is a two twenty four game total, one of the higher ones on the night. Simons has been playing awesome the last couple games. Three games, uh, he went down each time sixty, then forty five, then thirty one. Pretty much down fifteen points each each game. But uh, I still think thirty plus fantasy points in this matchup with. Everybody out is very doable, so I like him here. Uh, Powell is now 7-1, but this is a really solid matchup, especially um, how the Kings like to play. So I, I think 30 fantasy points is is there again, more so cash than, than tournament. I think he's safe for 30. I don't know the upside for 40, um, but he does have that. <clears throat> and that's pretty much where I'm looking at here. Um, Covington, Simons, Powell, I'll take some chances on him, uh, likely in that order. All right, jumping on over to the last game of the night. We have the Memphis Grizzlies taking on the Los Angeles Lakers at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a 226 game total, and the Lakers are three-point home favorites. We have nothing for the Grizzlies because they are on the back end of a back-to-back, -back, but Dylan Brooks got hurt last night, uh, so he's probably unlikely to play. Sammy um, <clears throat> Adams was out. He, he's in the health and safety protocols, likely not going to play. Kyle Anderson, John Morant, John Concar, uh, Killian Tilly, I mean, Xavier Tillman, I'm sorry, are likely all questionable for this one uh, for the people that are in the rotation. Uh, Morant missed last game with an ankle in, or <clears throat> with an injury. I believe it was thigh. Um, Kyle Anderson is still trying to make his way back. Uh, he, he has a hurt back. Concar, Tillman, trying to make their way back as well. Uh, they're all real questionable. And it's unfortunate that this is the late game of the night, but it is what it is. We likely won't have the news before 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on who's in, who's out. But um, Brooks, Adams will say that those two guys are likely out. Adams is out. Brooks is 90%, I would say, out. So that helps us narrow some things down there a little bit. Brandon Clark, 4,700. If Anderson misses again, very solid. Um, he's playing a lot of minutes right now. Uh, he's playing a lot of center minutes without Adams, a lot of extra power forward minutes without Kyle Anderson if he misses. Uh, Brandon Clark at 4,700. His efficiency is through the roof. And when he rebounds the ball like he did last night, then the upside is huge there. So I will take uh, some extra chances on him. He only went up $300 and... Not much has changed as of yet on the injury report, so like him there. De'Anthony Melton, 4,600. Uh, <clears throat> without Dylan Brooks, there's a sizable hole in there, and we don't see John Kincar playing at the at the moment. He's he's going to be questionable for this one, so a lot of minutes to go around. Zaire Williams is not the guy. Um, De'Anthony Melton's been playing fantastic since he's come back from health and safety protocols the last two games. Averaging, he has 19 rebounds and 12 assists in those two games. Uh, the shot hasn't fallen. He only is 3 of 19 from the field shooting, uh, 2 of 13 from 3. That hasn't fallen, but we know when his shot does fall because he's a pretty solid shooter. He's streaky. Uh, when, it, when he's hot, he's hot. When that shot falls, pair it with his counting stats and the defense that we know he brings. Uh, upside is huge here at only 4,600, so I will take a chance on him. Hope John Morant doesn't play. Opens that upside even more. Uh, Tyus Jones 
if there's no jaw. We know we know what he is, forty two hundred. That's still a solid. That's a solid price for him. We don't want it to be too much higher. Uh, but without Ja, should play thirty minutes. Should run the offense. Uh, we know he can flirt with double digit assists. He, he'll score double digit points like he has um, consistently the last five games. Uh, and then he can pitch in some rebounds and, and steal the ball because we know he does that. And at forty two hundred, if there's no Ja in this matchup, really like it. Uh, and then again, if there's no Ja, Bain and Jackson, all without Brooks already. And possibly no Kyle Anderson, and then possibly no Ja. Bain and, and Jackson are going to carry the offensive load, so I really like them. Uh, I think there's a lot of guys to take chances on here with so many injuries. Uh, Bain, Jackson, Clark, Melton, Jones um, could change if Ja plays. Kyle Anderson is back, and somehow Dylan Brooks avoided a what looked to be a serious injury. Um, that could change, but right now I, I don't see too much changing. Uh, and that's real attack. If Ja is healthy and ready to go. 9700 to me is a solid price tag, and I won't have as much exposure to Bain and, and Jackson, but I still like Clark and Melton. All right, going on over to the other side of the ball for the Lakers. Um, I just realized I didn't say the injury report for the Lakers. I got caught up on the Grizzlies. Sorry about that. Anthony Davis, Jay Huff, Mason Jones, Kendrick Nunn all out, and the probable is probable. Uh LeBron is 11-6. This is a solid matchup. He's probably going to start on center. Uh, we could see Jaron Jackson against LeBron at, at the center position. LeBron has been playing great. I would prefer Jokic at 600 more. Um, he's just super safe at the moment. And LeBron, not saying LeBron isn't safe, but I, I like the upside that uh, Jokic plays. Has a little bit more in his matchup, though. If you only you don't have that $600, I don't mind going to LeBron here. Uh, Malik Monk, 6'3", price tag's getting up there, but his game has been awesome. Three straight games of over 20 actual points. Honestly, we could we could start attacking it if he's going to shoot this fantastic. Uh, the Grizzlies have a lot of bodies missing, so I think we can look at Malik Monk here. Taylor Horton Tucker, it's going to be a lot of forwards, guards in the other game. Uh, back-to-back games of averaging 20 actual points and five and a half assists. Okay, if that's something that we're going to continue to see, I think he can continue to hit 30 points. So I will look at him if he's starting to turn along. Um, and those are the th- the guys that I'm mainly looking at. I think Monk and, and Tucker are solid value at mid-tier uh, and LeBron if, if you don't get up to Jokic. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, before we head on out of here, I will throw out my favorite player, pe- uh, player tiers of the night. And for the expensive tier... I'm not going to go all the way to the top. I feel like that's easy, even though I love it. Uh, but I'll I'll lower it down a little bit uh, and zero in on Vucevic against Dallas's front court, underwhelming front court, especially without Porzingis. Uh, 9100. I think he's going to gobble up rebounds. He's going to get a lot of easy putbacks. Uh, I really like Vuce in this matchup at 9100, and he's at the lower end of the expensive tier. Um, on the mid tier. I can throw a, a, a double bonus, some guy I like, very expensive, and someone who's not as expensive. I will start with the more expensive one at 7-8. Really like um, D'Angelo Russell. <clears throat> and this is pendant, pending on, because I mentioned it before, on Fox, but um, I'll just say, eh, I won't go with Russell. I'll say Halliburton. With or without Fox, without Fox, absolutely love him. He's going to likely be the best play of the night uh with fox i still take some chances on him at six nine in this matchup i will switch that up for you guys and uh i will leave that one like that on the lower end tier uh kobe white 5500 i think is a solid play All right and now my favorite value play of the night there are quite a few of them uh i'll stick with uh we'll go with brandon clark at 4700 uh Depending on Ja, that might change to Melton. But for now, a lot of things we're unsure about. But Brandon Clark at 4700 really like that price tag. Uh, he's been playing a lot lately. Uh, we know Steven Adams is out. Kyle Anderson is questionable. There's minutes to go around. If he's playing 20 to 30 minutes, uh, very solid re- there. If he can grab some rebounds, we know he can block shots. We know he scores efficiently, so love him there. And that does it. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will catch you again tomorrow. Peace.